Hey, how you doing? This is RJ. Just to let you know, this might be a little bit of a longer video because I'm going to talk about a number of things today that I'm passionate about. I'm going to talk about heroes and I'm going to talk about storytelling and I'm going to talk about the state of the industry. And the reason why I started to think about these three things together was because of my last video where I went over the numbers for Marvel for the last year and I was concentrating specifically on the numbers for books that were SJW character driven books. And it seems to me that what has already started to happen and what will happen in the new year is that most of these books are going to be cancelled and these characters are all going to be shoved into team books. And again, this has already started to happen. You look at the Unstoppable Wasp and her new book really isn't just about the Unstoppable Wasp. It's the Unstoppable Wasp and the Agents of Girl. If you look at Kate Bishop's Hawkeye, you know, you have San Amanad saying that the West Coast Avengers is just another Kate Bishop book. That's what it was brought out there for. But they brought in a bunch of other characters to make it a team book. And if you look at Marvel Rising, you have all of these characters that nobody really cares about and they're putting them all together on a team. You have America Chavez, you have Squirrel Girl, you have Kamala Khan, you have Riri Williams, you have Lockjaw, you have Inferno, you have, I don't know what his name is, The Shield. You know, they're putting them all together and they're putting them on a team and I think what they're trying to do is take the cachet of Spider-Gwen and Quake and try and pull it all together with that. And what seems to be happening is that they're taking all of these characters and and they're putting them into these team books, hoping that they'll be able to survive in a team book because their own titles just can't survive. And again, if you look at some of the things that Sana Amanat has said, you know, she says that if these characters do fail in their own books, they're going to push them and continue to push them in other directions and other avenues. So this team book avenue seems to be their next step in what they're going to do to do that. And even though this has been something that comic books have used a number of times in their history to try to keep characters out there, I can see a number of problems with it, even in its history, but certainly in its execution here now with these kinds of characters. And the thing is that I would say in those stories, when they have been used before, in those team books, when they have been used in the history of Marvel and DC, they had to be constructed in a way that your characters had to actually contribute to the team and they had to have characters where their heroic nature was something that fed into the team mentality. Now this can be done in a number of different ways. There are some characters I would say that need to be on a team and there are some characters I would say that if you put them on the team they simply don't belong there or at the very least if you put them on certain teams they just don't belong there. So characters that I would say would always belong on a team would be for DC would be Cyborg. Cyborg just belongs on a team. He had some miniseries back in the 80s and some attempts to try to make him a standalone hero, but he just can't stand alone. He needs to be a character that's on another team. And for Marvel, I would say a character in that vein would be Hawkeye. You know, I remember those old miniseries of Hawkeye where it was just Hawkeye. And I remember them fondly, but really probably a little too fondly, because the way that I actually remember Hawkeye and remember Hawkeye in a positive way is him being part of the Avengers. He's always part of the Avengers. I can just remember him always bickering and arguing with Cap or with other people on the Avengers. You know, this was part of his character. This was part of his being a hero. I went over this in another video. I would say the main pathos for Hawkeye, why he is a hero, has to do with arrogance. And the thing is that he's just a guy with a trick bow. He has that arrogance to push him on to actually be a hero. And that works out well in a team venue because he has people to bicker and argue with because he is being someone who's being pompous. He is being someone who is being arrogant and other people actually point that out and it works really well in a team book and it doesn't work so well when he's by himself. But you have on the other end of the scale, you have characters like Wolverine and even though Wolverine started out on a team book with the X-Men, I would say Wolverine is a standalone character. Wolverine is a character that 
is meant to stand on his own. And when he was in those team books, even though he started there and actually works as an X-Men, in those team books, especially in the 80s and the 90s, he was always the loner. Always the loner. He was the one who was always threatening to leave. He was the one always getting in fights with Cyclops or whoever was telling him what to do. He was always ready to be the outsider and just take off. And the times when he wasn't, he was on a team that were all loners. You know, when they were in the outback, they were all loners. They had that wildness to them. So that wildness, I would say, is part of the heroic character of Wolverine. It's where his heroism, in part, comes from. And when I started to read the newer books, when you have Wolverine becoming one of the Avengers, it really, really tarnished the character for me because he doesn't belong there. The Avengers are a team which are out in the light and they're paragons that are supposed to be heroes to little children and things like that. That's not Wolverine. Wolverine is someone who belongs in the dark, who belongs in the woods, who belongs in the wild. And if he does go on a team, he has to be that wild element to the team. And again, I think that sort of broke the character a little bit for me when they did that and put him on those kinds of teams. He doesn't belong on those kinds of teams, and those kinds of teams make no sense to me. Now, for all of these characters, well, I would say these two characters, certainly for Marvel that I just looked at, it's that they work well on a team or don't work well on a team because you're playing off of their heroic nature. That's simply what has to happen in these team books. You know, because I remember a lot of team books from the 70s and the 80s, some in the 90s, but I was thinking about these team books and about these team books which had characters which were second or third tier characters. And... I would think of things like the champions, you know, the old champions. And it had a number of heroes on it, and they were trying to be heroic in that team, but they weren't gelling together as a heroic team. That is to say, their heroism wasn't drawn out. The elements of their characters that made them heroes wasn't drawn out. But I can still remember reading those comics. I can still remember the basic lineup for those comics. You know, you had Iceman, you had Beast, you had Hercules, you had Black Widow, you had possibly Tigra at times, and I think maybe Ghost Rider. You know, I can remember a lot of those books. So on that team, you had these characters which were heroes, but it just didn't work with them being heroes together. But I remember other books like The Defenders, and I'm not talking about the new Defenders, I'm talking about the old Defenders. And I have a lot of old Defenders, and I bought them, and I read them, and the thing is, I was thinking about that team as I was thinking about this video, and for the life of me, I cannot remember most of the characters on that team. That team was just so poorly put together with people from all over the place. I mean, I'm scratching at the back of my mind for like a day and a half to try to remember who was actually on that team. You had, I think, Valkyrie, and maybe gargoyle if i remember correctly and that guy who was dressed up as a bird in blue and yellow i don't even remember his name and you had a bunch of others on there like the son of satan and things like that and that's me coming up with these names after a day and a half i really can't remember i read these books and i actually have a lot of them in my collection i just don't remember them why because the team just didn't work i remember the fact that the team just didn't work it was thrown together slapdash and these heroes didn't actually mesh in any way and their heroics didn't actually make an impact in me for me to even remember their names or who the main lineup for this team was. And there's the thing, okay? It's the heroic nature, I think, that defines these teams, whether they work well or whether they work at all. It's the heroic nature which makes them memorable. And for these characters, these SJW driven characters that are now being driven into teams to try to keep them in the publishing sphere, they're not heroes. They're just not heroes. I mean, they don't have a pathos. They don't have that heroic nature. And you even have Sana Aminat and G. Willow Wilson saying, oh, we proudly present this character, Kamala Khan, and there is no reason for her to be a hero. She has no pathos. We know she doesn't. We are sticking it in everybody's face that she doesn't. She doesn't have a Uncle Ben moment that Spider-Man has. You know, she doesn't have that. And they're saying, yeah, she doesn't have that. So what? And that's the problem with these 
characters. They're not heroes to begin with. And I've said this a number of times. A hero, traditionally, you know, for the last 3,000 years of Western civilization, a hero is a paragon of virtue. And that's how you defined a hero for the last 3,000 years. You have a person who serves something greater than themselves. That virtue. They serve that virtue that is greater than themselves. They serve something that is greater than themselves. And that's why they can be heroes. Because when push comes to shove and they're on the battlefield and they're going to die they're going to fight to the death because they are not concerned about themselves so much they are concerned about that thing that greater thing that they serve and they will give their lives for it that's what makes them a hero but these characters these sjw characters they don't have that and there's no reason for them to be heroes so they might have superpowers and they might actually play act at being heroes and have some heroics but there's no reason for them to be heroes therefore they are not actually heroes so when they get on a battlefield field and push comes to shove and they're going to get killed if they are simply thinking about themselves and themselves is all that they care about the greatest good for them is themselves then they're going to turn tail and run if the decision is i am the greatest good and i'm about to get killed here what do I do? Well, I preserve the greatest good. That means I turn around and I run away. That's not a hero. And conversely, if in the books, in the story, that character doesn't actually run away, but has no reason to stay there, then it breaks the story. The story is not a good story because, of course, there is simply no reason for them to be there and continue to fight there is actually a reason for them to turn around and run. So it's a bad story if these characters actually act in this way. They are not heroes. And since they are not heroes, it doesn't matter if you take them all and put them together on a team. There is no drawing out of any heroic nature of these characters to make these teams work because none of them are actually heroes and therefore these team books are not going to work. And what's going to happen to them is they're going to be forgotten. And that's really where I came to my realization of what's going Going to happen in 2019. These characters, these SJW characters, they're going to be forgotten. This is the first stage of them being forgotten. Like the fact that I can no longer remember the Defenders and their lineup from so long ago, even though I read all of the books. These characters are simply going to be forgotten. And if there's anything that would stick in the craw of an SJW writer, that would be it. To have their work forgotten. To have their heroes forgotten. And that's what's happening right now, and that's what's going to happen in the next year. Their stuff is going to be forgotten. And I've listened to numerous interviews with these story writers, these SJW story writers. I've gone through hours and hours of recordings listening to them blather on. And the way that they're mentality usually works is that prior to the last election in the U.S., they thought to themselves they were in control and it was their job as a writer to change society for quote-unquote the better as they would see it. That is what they saw their jobs as actually being. You know, G. Willow Wilson came out straight out and said, you know, that's what she believed her job was, was to change society through her writing, and she knew that since everything was going their way, then they were going to have an easy time at doing that, and simply that's what she thought was what she was doing with her writing and what she should be doing with her writing. But then the election came along, and all of these people, again, like G. Willow Wilson and a number of them, have stated that they saw that, you know what, we're not in control anymore, therefore we must fight to enact this change. It wasn't an automatic, we are simply going to enact change through our writing. We are now going to fight to enact change with our writing. And that's what's been happening for the last couple of years. And that's what they've been doing. And the thing is that they're pushing so much in this one direction and everybody else was ready to forget about all of this two years ago. You know, two weeks after the election, they were all ready to say, okay, settle down. You just let it go, all right? And we're just going to go back to our normal lives. But it's now been two years since that, and everybody is really, really sick and tired of all of this nonsense. And it seems that everybody else, you know, everybody else, I would say, just plain normal people, and most comic book readers, I would say, are just plain normal people, and they're just saying to themselves, okay, I'm moving on. You can stay in the one place that you're stuck in and rail all you want. I'm moving on. 
I'm just going to concentrate on the things that actually make me happy, on the stories that I actually like. And if you start getting in my face again, I'll just push you away with the back of my hand and say, can you please keep it down? The adults over here are doing something. That's what's happening, I think, and that's what's going to happen in 2019, to be sure. These people, these SJW writers, are going to be shown that no matter what they do, even putting these things and their characters into books that are team books to try to conglomerate them all together so that they actually have something that they suppose will work for other people, they're just going to be shown that no, you and your characters are simply going to be forgotten. We have already started to forget them. We don't care about them. Please go away. And they're going to go ballistic. I could see that easily happening in 2019. And again, the smart response to that would be simply to push them away with the back of your hand saying, please go away. We've moved on. And hopefully enough of the comic industry will realize that yes, they have to move on as well and get back to actually telling good stories. So I know this is a little bit of a rambly video, but I wanted to talk about heroes and about the future of comics and what the new year I think holds for all of us. So if I gave you anything new to think about, hit like, hit the shield in the lower right hand corner of your screen to subscribe and leave me a comment. Tell me what you think about my predictions for what's going to happen in 2019. All right. I'll see you later. Bye.